Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. We have a market that has set 36 new record highs since the beginning of the year. On Tuesday, both the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 set new records. How do you trade a market like this? I found in the past that when you're getting towards the top of a market, it may well go way beyond this. I think it's a slower grind upwards. And when you're in that kind of market, what I do is I buy and hold. And you know, that I'm a very active trader by nature, but trading excessively actually becomes a deficit in this situation because the market doesn't go up one or two percent per day and jump around that much. So you're ahead just to hold and I'm holding overnight and planning to keep holding some positions of mine, some core positions. I may trade individual stocks, but even those, I will continue to pick those that I think will continue to grind higher. You've been told to buy small stocks. It's too soon to buy them. We have to wait for the market to stabilize and it's not stabilized at all. We could have a 10% correction. Well, here's news for everyone. You can always have a 10% correction. If you're in the stock market, you know that. The best thing to do that I found for myself is to put a 4% trailing stop loss. And that more or less protects me from sudden downturns. Looking at the the chart for the last month, you can see that the NASDAQ has made over 7%. The S&P 500 has made over 4%. The IWM, which is the Russell 2000, has made 0.1%. Basically has made nothing in the last month. It's too soon. And I'm not overly eager to trade small stocks. If we do have a correction, who's to say that it isn't the big stocks, the big money rich stocks that will survive at the best. That's what I think and that's what I'm trading. I prefer to trade the Magnificent Seven. That has been the trend and the trend has certainly been your friend. As we look at the chart, the Magnificent Seven ETF, MAGS, MAGS, it has made about 7% in the last month, while QQQ has made 7.5%. Now, 7.5% is a really decent return, so I don't want to discourage anyone that's in QQQ. QQQ, you are in a very good fund, I think. It's the 100 largest companies on the NASDAQ, and there's more diversification there. So it's, it might be safer if you believe that the big magnificent seven, the, the big companies, are going to crash hardest. I don't think so. I think they probably will crash moderately in comparison to other stocks. The focus recently has been mainly on Tesla and secondarily N NVIDIA, simply because because it's always going to be in focus because it's so important to artificial intelligence. Looking at the chart, you can see what a wild tear Tesla has been on. In the last month, it's gone up from about 175 to 262, 48% return. It is overbought as its relative strength is 87. Nvidia in the last week has gone up about 5%, as you can see from the chart, and it's stair-stepping its way up from about 120 to 131. I expect just kind of the slow progress to continue. It won't be exciting until we get to earnings. NVIDIA's earnings come out on August 21st. Chips have been going up generally, and I'm fond of ETFs when we're in a market like this where I expect it to continue to grind higher fairly slowly, actually, and I'm just going to hold on to it. This is the VanEck Semiconductor ETF, symbol SMH which has gone up significantly in the last week. It's gone up from about 261 to almost 275. I don't expect it to keep going at this rate. I think things are set to be clear for a while because everybody's waiting for Powell to cut rate. Besides NVIDIA, I also owned Broadcom, AVGO, and it's going to split its shares 10 for 1 on July 12th. <laughs> so that's one of the big reasons I'm doing it. It probably will go down somewhat after the split. That's been the history of the recent 10 for 1 splits. I'm buying 100 shares now, which will become 1,000 after they split on July 12th. And depending on how the stock moves, I may add to the position. I eventually would like to own about 1,500 shares after it splits. I ran into an interesting ETF, which I cannot help but tell you about. And it's based on the stock 
stock trading positions of Nancy Pelosi. At least that was the inspiration. Its symbol is N-A-N-C, after her first name, of course, and it's based on all Democratic congressmen's stock trade. It's called Unusual Wells Subversive Democratic Trading. The Republicans also have a fund in this regard based on Republicans in Congress, their trading positions. And its symbol is Cruz, K-R-U-Z. As you can see from the chart, the Democrats' ETF, Nancy, N-A-N-C, made about 34%, while the Republicans made almost 20%. So their knowledge in Congress apparently helps. Be sure to like and comment and share, and I will try to keep you informed on what I think are the most sound ways to trade in this market from my point of view. Thank you. Thank you.